Basic things. Um, a lot of work with the spine, a lot of feeling into um, feeling into um, our, our rooting and our grounding down. And then in order to elongate the spine, um, feeling into sense of what is above sky, universe, through the crown. Um, it's also my wish and my intention that this practice be really nourishing for you guys. Um, I was talking to someone earlier today who may or may not be in this class. <laughs> and she had said, and uh, it just stuck in my heart all day. And she had said, um, I just really feel like I'm running on empty. And um, I don't know if any, yeah, I don't know if anyone else is feeling that way. Um, I, I know that on and off, I've been feeling that way for the, right, the past year. Um, but we're, you know, we're, we're here in this class because we are in one way or another yogis, right? Um, and yogis often are the givers of the group of the family. Um, and we tend to give not necessarily with regard to what, what we have in us left to give. Um, so it is my intention tonight that um, I just kind of plant that seed, right? That we all know, right? You put the air mask on yourself before you assist your child, right? It's the same thing, right? Unless your cup is full, unless you are nourished, right? Unless you are feeling well, it is very difficult to give to others, right? In a way that is, is healthy, right? At, at some point, you're just gonna run out of juice, right? So before that happens, right? We come to our mats, we find um, moments of self-care throughout the day, um, you know, we make sure we have enough water. We make sure we are eating as best we can. Um, I like to wear, I wear this mom bracelet. And whenever I look at this bracelet, um, it reminds me, I, I check in with myself. So this might be a practice you might be interested in adopting. Um, wearing uh, even just a little string on the wrist, right? And whenever you see it, you might say to yourself, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Do I have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Um, what else might I need in this moment? Do I need to get up from my desk and take a walk, right? Those sorts of things, um, right? Or, or halt, right? Or talk, am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired, right? Those are the things that are often very draining. Um, so without further ado, we will have a gentle, nourishing, gentle practice where we'll be focusing on our spine um, and after our asana practice, we are going to um, have a guided meditation. That's going to be, um, my wish is a really nourishing, fill your cup, almost literally, uh, meditation. So does anyone have any, um, hey, Linda, welcome. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Or um, has anyone thought of a body part that they would like some extra stretching for or some extra cueing for? All right, guys, you're in my hands. We're going to begin on the back. Unless you don't want to begin on the back, right? This is your practice. So if you're on the back, you might bring a blanket under your head. Um, if your low back is feeling grumpy, maybe feet are not distance apart. Knees come together. That can help alleviate any pinching of the vertebrae of the low back. Otherwise, legs might be upstretched. Decide where your palms go, what feels right in your body. You may ground seated. You might like to bring the back up against the wall or sit in a chair. You don't need to see me, you just need to hear me. You can also ground standing. You've been sitting all day and just really feel like standing, right? So if you are standing, feel your feet on the earth. If you are seated, right, feel your sit bones on the earth, your legs, your feet, what else might be held by the earth. If you're lying on the back, Begin to notice all the places on the back body here held by the earth. Close your eyes if they haven't closed already, unless that's producing any anxiety, in which case just soften the gaze. Maybe look down the bridge of the nose and not focus on anything in particular. Begin to notice your breath.
What are some qualities you might notice about your breath? So here we are witnessing the breath, not judging the breath, not directing the breath. Where's your breath traveling tonight? Right. Can you identify kind of that breath container within your physical body? Breath comes in the nose, it's down the throat. Maybe it swirls around the collarbones. Maybe it comes in a little more deeply to the heart space. Maybe you can feel your breath in your ribs or in your belly. Right. There's no right place to be breathing here except wherever it is you're breathing here. You might notice if there's any little texture to the breath, right? Maybe it's bumpy in places. Maybe there's little pauses or catches. Just noticing them where they come in, when they come in. You might notice the length of the inhale and the exhale. Maybe one is longer than the other. Maybe they're even. You might notice the pauses between the inhale and the exhale. Can we allow those pauses to happen and to allow the breath itself to decide when to arrive next, rather than rushing into the next part of the breath? But the breath will come. It does so all day long without your noticing. So just let the breath move in and out of the body. You might notice, right, as we have gone through this practice, your breath may have changed, right? It may have gotten a little deeper. It may have gotten a little more even. It may have gotten a little smoother. It may not. Again, just noticing. And so this breath exercise is available to you at any time. Right, eyes opened or closed, you might just notice your breath. Right, that in and of itself can be really nourishing. It's taking some time to notice the gift of breath. And we're gonna ask the breath for some subtle changes, right? And if any of these requests is producing any discomfort or anxiety, please return to your natural breath. Okay, so I'll ask the breath to come in a little bit deeper. So, right, if we're breathing into the collarbones, maybe it comes halfway between collarbones and heart space. If we're breathing into heart space, maybe we ask breath to start to come into the rib cage. And maybe we feel the rib cage, maybe breath comes into the belly. So the idea is just to take one step, not a big leap, just a little more breath. Now that we're bringing in this extra breath, let's be sure we're getting rid of all that stale air. So we'll ask the breath to be more even. So the inhale is about the same length as the exhale, right? You might count them and find the midpoint, or it might be more of a felt sense for you. Then we'll notice if any of those little bumps and catches are still coming in. And if they are, we'll seek to soften them. Right, they may still creep in and that's okay. And we do that just by shining our attention on where they tend to come in. So you might bring this smooth, deep, even breath with you all throughout your practice. Or you might instead prefer your natural breath. I'll invite you to set an intention for your practice, right? It might be something related to um, filling your cup, self-care, right? listening to your body. Or maybe something else, maybe a goal you're working toward or a wish or a prayer for yourself or someone else. Repeat intention three times to the self in the present tense as if it's already happened. I am peace. I am enough. 
I care for myself and my body. We'll take a series of three cleansing breaths here. Big breath in through the nose, bring the breath down the throat. Imagine it traveling down the spine, filling the belly like a big balloon. Release out of the mouth with a sigh. Allow the body to soften with the exhale. Two more unless these breaths are producing anxiety. If so, find that smooth, deep, even breath or return to your natural breath. <sighs> You're on mute, so feel free to let those sighs really go. <sighs> Begin to ask your body how it would like to move here, right? We're gonna be coming back into the body. Eventually we're gonna be coming up into a seat. So ask the body how it would like to move. Maybe it wants to wiggle fingers and toes and roll the wrists and ankles, right? Maybe your body would like a sway or a stretch or a curl up. As you feel ready, please bend into the knees and turn over onto either side. Use that bottom arm as the pillow. As best we can, we seek to keep the eyes closed. It's okay if they flutter open. We'll take a big breath in to straighten the top leg. Exhale, slowly, gently press up into any comfortable seat. All right. So let's find Sukhasana. Easy seat. I'm gonna suggest if you have one handy, bringing a blanket or a towel under the sit bones. Maybe it gives the, um, gives the pelvis a little height, right? Which encourages the knees to kind of travel south. So we're gonna cross at the shins, flex the feet, ask the knees to travel south, right? If this isn't working for your legs tonight, that's okay. You might stack the um, ankles uh, with the pelvic floor. You might just release the legs out front, okay? If you happen to have blocks or blankets or other things, books, you might stick under the knees, right? If the hips really feel like they're pinching and, and you want to be in Sukhasana, um, blocks under the knees is a nice option. All right. So let's move the flesh away from the sit bones. Okay, we want to feel really rooted here, really grounded. Okay, then we're going to stack our bones. So we're going to draw the low belly in and up. That's going to brace the low back. And imagine making space between the rib points here and the, the hip points. Okay, now imagine I've got a string that's at the crown of your head on an inhale, crown of the head reaches for the sky, getting any amount taller. Imagine making space between each of the vertebrae. Okay, so we're gonna let the shoulders rest on the back ribs. Ribs hover over, over sorry, shoulders hover over ribs, ribs hover over pelvis. Check in on the placement of the skull, maybe tuck the chin back a bit so the skull is hovering over the heart space. We're gonna close the eyes. Let's imagine our bones inside of the body. Maybe we imagine it as our scaffolding. Palms up if you feel like you need some energy tonight. Palms down if you feel like you need some more grounding. See how it feels to draw the elbows under the shoulders. So the shoulders kind of have that cue of that weight to rest down into. Finish your breath as it moves in and out of the body. Notice all the places that are supported here by the earth, your blanket, your mat. All right, we've got the tush, the sit bones, the legs, the sides of the feet, the ankles. And if your legs are outstretched, backs of the legs. And begin to imagine little tiny roots beginning to sprout wherever you feel contact with the earth. These little sprouts are rooting through your floor, through your subfloor, maybe through another floor, maybe through basement. And eventually they find earth. They reach and grow down into the earth as they seek water and nutrients. So you might imagine coming up from the earth, coming up through these roots into your body, nourishment, love, light, peace. 
Right? And at the same time, right, these roots also allow you to release anything, right? Release anything that doesn't serve you. So while some of the roots are drawing up love, light, peace, energy, nourishment, right? Other roots may be used to release down into the earth that which you don't need. And so identifying in the physical body, maybe anything that feels unwell or tense or tight. And just imagining that sensation melting down, finding a route to exit. And you might imagine on the inhale, drawing up through those roots, whatever we need. And then maybe on the exhale, a release of whatever we don't need. Feel your sit bones rooting down toward the earth. At the same time, the crown of the head reaches for the sky, keeping the spine nice and long. And we'll bring hands to heart center. We'll lower the head to the heart. Let's again find intention. Why do you practice? Why are you on your mat tonight? As you feel ready on an inhale, bring the chin back to neutral, let the eyes open. We'll bring the hands back to the left, palms up for energy, palms down for more grounding. All right, the spine moves six ways. All right, every day, right? A great way to nourish yourself, a great way for some real quick self care is to move your spine six ways every day. All right, so we'll go through them now. We always ask the spine to get long before we ask it to take a shape. All right, so we're gonna feel the sit bones rooted on the earth. We're gonna feel the crown of the head reach for the sky. We're gonna take a big breath in, reach the arms overhead, palms will face each other. Exhale, right hand to right hip, left arm reaches overhead. Keep the left sit bone rooted, right? It may wanna pop up, keep it rooted down. So this is one. We're opening the side body here. We're compressing the opposite side body, right? We're taking a C curve into the spine. Option to stay here. Right? If this is nourishing you, plant yourself here. Right? If you feel like you need more sensation, walk right fingertips out, maybe bend into the elbow. If it's too much, right? if it's making you wince, if it's pain, we're going to walk the hand back. Option to stay here, option to open the heart. Inhale, open the shoulder, lift the gaze. Please check in on your neck here. If your neck says no, right? now we bring the gaze back forward. Maybe we close the shoulder a bit. Find your breath, don't forget to breathe, right? We're breathing that smooth, deep, even breath or ujjayi breath, if that is in your practice or your natural breath. Which do you find most nourishing to you? If you open the shoulder on your next exhale, we'll close it off, turn the gaze forward. Next inhale, reach the arms overhead, we'll get nice and tall again, long spine. Exhale, left hand to left hip, right arm reaches overhead. Big stretch on the right side body, compressing the ribs on the opposite side. Let's take a few breaths here. Keep that right sit bone rooted. Feel your roots grow. If we're feeling nourished here, we're just going to pause right here and enjoy this. If we'd like more stretch, we walk the left fingers out. Maybe we bend the elbow. Maybe we've gone too far and we decide to walk it back. Option here to inhale, open the shoulder, lift the gaze, press the heart for the sky. My neck usually says no here. <laughs> Find your breath. If you open the shoulder on your next exhale, we'll close it off, stretch. Inhale, get nice and tall, let the palms touch, lift the gaze to the thumbs. Exhale, hands come to heart center, pull the belly in, and then rest the hands on the left. So that was one and two. We're gonna find three and four now. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. We're gonna get nice and tall. We're gonna come into our twist slowly in three parts. On an exhale, we're gonna turn a third of the way to the right, open the arms into a walk. Inhale, get any amount taller. Exhale, belly comes in again, flip the palms toward the ground. Wrist down to shoulder height, a little more twist. Inhale once more, long spine. Exhale, pull the belly in, coming fully into the twist. Left hand above, right knee. 
Right hand plants behind the spine. We're gazing over the back shoulder. I'm turning sideways so you can see me. We're using the right arm behind us to keep the spine long and tall. Crown of the head is reaching for the sky. Hip points are facing forward. Twist as best we can comes from the low rib cage. Find your breath. On your next inhale, get taller. Exhale, pull the belly in. Maybe we twist a little more, maybe not. Okay. If we feel the pain, if it's something that's sharp and sudden, if it makes our face scrunch up, right? That's pain, that's different from sensation. Pain, we're gonna come right out. Sensation, we send a breath. Next inhale, we'll come out of our twist. Let's reach the arms overhead. Gaze follows. And then coming into a third of our twist on an exhale, twisting to the left, opening arms into a Y. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, arms come out into a T, palms face down, a little more twist. Inhale, one more time. Exhale, belly comes in. Right hand above left knee, left hand plants behind the spine. Looking over the back shoulder, if that's okay, on the neck. Twist is coming from low ribs here. Check in on what might be working that doesn't have to. How's your jaw, shoulders, space between the eyebrows? Next inhale, get a little taller. Next exhale, belly comes in, maybe a little more twist. Maybe not, please be cognizant, right? Two sides of the body may take a very different shape. We don't expect one side to take the same shape as the other. We are curious, right, about all the shapes the body takes on both sides. What's going on on this side? Next inhale, we'll reach the arms overhead, let the palms touch, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands come to heart center. All right, we're going to switch the crossing of the legs here. All right, so again, crossing at the shins, flexing the feet. Let's set our scaffolding again. Low belly in and up. Shoulders rest. Shoulders hover over ribs. Ribs over hips. All right, so that was three and four, right, twisting. Then we're going to find five and six with our cat cat. So let's take a big inhale. We're gonna roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades reach for each other on the back, heart space presses forward and up, gently tipping the chin up. Please don't let the head flop all the way back. On an exhale, we begin to pull the belly button in toward the spine, turning the gaze toward the lap. Shoulder blades draw away from each other, arms wrap around the torso. Notice which arm is on top. Inhale, open. Number five. Exhale around, pull the belly in, squeeze out the stellar. Bring the opposite arm on top. Number six. Let's take three more, four more rather, with your own breath. Right, so you're gonna move a little faster than me, you're gonna move a little slower than me. Right, everybody's breath is different. Right, maybe one of these um, spine shapes feels really good. So maybe you want to hold it for a couple of breaths and skip the movement. That's okay. And maybe you like doing this really quickly and you want to get in a couple extra rounds. All right. When you are done with your rounds, please take your time. We'll meet up in our Sukhasana. All right, so let's bring the arms out front. We're gonna tuck the thumbs in, wrap the fingers around, roll the wrists, clicking and popping is fine. Keep your low belly in and up as best you can. Notice if your shoulders have crept up by your ears. Your shoulders think they're in charge. Tell them to cool it. <laughs> and it's your arms job to hold up your arms. Pause, reverse. Right. See if you can't recruit those biceps to take over some of the work. Shake it out. <laughs> All right, let's take some shoulder circles. We'll inhale the arms up. 
exhale, bring the fingers down onto the shoulders, and then we circle the shoulders. So inhale, draw them forward. Exhale, round and down. Inhale, forward. It's a little counterintuitive, right? Exhale, round and down. <laughs> so you might just isolate the shoulders, right? You might just roll the shoulders. That's cool. Or you might get your spine involved, right? Making it more cat-cow. Next time your elbows are down, we're going to pause and then we'll kind of do the opposite. So inhale, shoulders back and up. Exhale, around and down. Inhale, back and up. Exhale, around and down. Okay, so that might feel more like a, might feel more natural for the breath. It's kind of fun sometimes to ask the breath and the brain and the body to figure out something a little different. Let's take one more. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> I'm projecting. My apologies. All right, let's pause with the elbows down. We're going to get tall again. Big breath in. Exhale. We're going to bring right ear toward right shoulder. So the movement is coming from the neck, not from the shoulder. Please don't tolerate any pain here. Allow the jaw to be soft. Send breath where you feel the stretch, right? So we use our imagination, right? Breath can be just breath. It can be a beautiful ray of light, cool breeze, a warm wave, right? Whatever works for your mind. Option to stay here. Option to inhale, right arm up, fingertips find the base of the ear, gently, gently resting the fingertips. Okay? If we'd like more sensation still on an inhale, we're going to gently, diagonally upward, draw the fingertips opening the side neck just a bit more. If we found pain, we release right away. Send your breath. All right, inhale, we'll release the hand and bring it down. We'll bring the head back to neutral. Notice how the skull feels on top of the neck. Big breath in, get tall. Exhale, we're gonna bring left ear toward left chin, left ear toward left shoulder. Nouns are not my friend today. <laughs> okay. We're opening the right side of the neck. Send it breath. Where do you feel it? Be curious. Option to stay here. Option to inhale, left fingertips up. Let the fingertips find the base of the ear. We're gently resting the hand here. No pressing, no pulling. Right? If we feel nourished here, we stay here. If we'd like more sensation, inhale. Diagonally upward, drawing the fingertips, finding a little more opening on the right side. Send it breath. What else can soften? Anyone else want to stay here? <laughs> All right. Inhale, we'll bring the hand up, bring the head back to neutral, hand comes to the back. Let's bend the knees, give the legs a little sway. Thank you, legs. That was kind of a long time to be sitting there. <laughs> All right, we're going to swing the legs around. We're going to come into our tabletop. If your knees are feeling grumpy, please take the time to open your blanket to bring it under the knees. Most of the things we're doing tonight in table, we can also do against the wall. So you might stand with shoulders over wrists, right? If we're against the wall, fingers spread wide, fingertips press into the wall, and the feet are going to be just slightly behind the hips. All right. So, and if we are on our mat, shoulders are still over wrists, fingers spread wide, press the fingertips down, press the tops of the feet firmly into the earth. Straight line from crown of the head through the tailbone. All right, it's so a long, long spine here. What is your connection here to the earth? Palms, shins, tops of feet. Let those roots grow here as well. Feeling nourished on the inhale, releasing what we don't need on the exhale. All right. So let's find five and six here for our spine. We'll take some cat-cow. Inhale, 
Shoulders roll back, heart presses forward, tailbone lifts. Let's take a couple breaths here. Please notice how you're feeling in your body, right? Cat cow can really be adapted to your unique spine, right? So you might really like lifting the tail. You might really like rolling the shoulders back. That might feel really nourishing tonight. Or you might make the movement a little more gentle, right? Just gently tipping the tailbone up. Just gently pulling the shoulders back. On your next exhale, we press the earth away, squeeze out the scale. Our belly button comes to the spine, shoulder blades grow away from each other. We're looking back at the thighs, really gentle tuck of the chin here. If you see your feet, tuck them away. Same thing here, right? We might really press the back of the heart toward the sky. We might really tuck that tail under, or we might take more of a gentle rounding here. All right, so find what nourishes you here. Inhale. Shoulders roll back, heart presses forward, tail lifts as much as feels right in your body. Exhale, press the earth away, pull the belly in, tuck and round as much as feels right. Three more, please, with your own breath. All right, so always knowing you can move a little faster or a little slower based on right, like what your energy level is in your body how your body is feeling today. When you're done with your rounds, we meet back up in tabletop. All right, we're going to take our spine now into a C curve. So just like seated, we want the spine to be long before we ask it to take a shape. So inhale, crown of the head reaches forward, tailbone reaches back. Exhale, we're gonna start to walk the hands toward the left. They're gonna come off of the mat. Keep marching those hands. We're opening the right side body, compressing left side body. Pause when your body says stop, All right? So when you have enough stretch here, or when you have enough compression on the opposite side, we're looking down at the hands, okay? And then if it's okay on the neck, we turn the gaze over the back shoulder. Bring breath into the body, send it where you need it. Feel your hands on the earth, feel the tops of the feet on the earth. On your next inhale, gaze comes down to the thumbs. We'll start to walk the hands toward tabletop again. It might take more than one breath, that's okay. When we reach our tabletop, we're going to take another deep breath in, long spine. Exhale, walk the hands over to the right, coming into a speak curve on the opposite side. Walk the right hand over. Right, two sides may be different, allowing for that. Right, we may walk a little farther on one side than the other. Then we pause, then we turn the gaze over the back shoulder. So we're feeling a stretch on the left, a compression on the right. Turning the gaze over the shoulder just increases the stretch a smidge. Not worth it if it's bringing pain to the neck. Where are you rooted, rooted toward the earth? As your next inhale comes, gaze finds the thumbs and we'll walk the hands back toward tabletop. All right. And then we're going to find everyone. Is everyone's wrists okay? I can't really see everyone, but I'm going to assume everyone's wrists are okay. If not, you can pause and pick up one hand and roll the wrists. All right, we're going to come into a, a twist here. So let's take the right hand under the nose. On an inhale, we're going to reach the left arm overhead. Gaze will follow. Just like in our seated twist, we're asking for the twist to come here from the rib. Gaze follows. Let's take a few breaths here. So the gaze can be at the hand, it can be forward, or it can be at the planted hand. If it feels a little awkward, you're probably doing it right. Big breath in. Exhale, bring the hand down. Briefly find table. Then left hand comes under the nose. Inhale, reach right arm overhead, twisting from low rib. As best as we can, we keep hip points facing down. That right hip might pop up a little, that's okay. Gaze is with lifted hand. Forward, right planted hand. Bring that breath in. Big breath in. 
Exhale, right hand comes down. We're going to find table. Let's take one round cat cow. Inhale, lift the tail, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, squeeze out the stellar, roll the shoulders away. Back to table. All right, we're going to come to our child's pose. Your choice, knees together or knees mat distance apart. Big toes touch. We send sit bones back to meet the heels. Forehead comes to the mat, arms are outstretched. Some quick notes here. Really common actually for the sit bones to hover and not find the heels. What we can do for that is bring in a blanket, a bolster, a pillow, right? Then sit bones have something to release down onto. Also really common for the forehead not to make it to the mat. Luckily, we've got our hands right here, right? We can stack fists, palms. We might bring a block under the forehead. Options for arms. Maybe palms find the earth. Breathing down through the palms. Maybe palms come together and wrists reach back for the back of the neck. This can be a really nice stretch for the upper arms. Maybe your wrists are feeling tired. So we reach the hands back to the heels, let the tops of the hands rest on the earth. We'll notice all the places here supported by the earth, legs, parts of the arms and hands, and space between the eyebrows. And we let our roots grow and nourish us and release what we don't need. We find intention here. What are the things that feed your intention? What are the choices we make that support your intention? Those are the things that nourish us. What are the things that don't support our intention? Things we need to say no to. Those are the things we let go of. Big breath in. Exhale through nose or mouth. Soften. <sighs> Another big breath in. Exhale. Let's find our tabletop. Knees under hips, shoulders under wrists, over wrists. <laughs> then we're going to take the hands a half a handprint forward. Make sure the fingers are spread wide and you're really pressing the fingertips down. Protect those wrists. We'll take some hip circles. Inhale to come forward. Exhale to press back, right? So it's, it's always up to you here, how far you want to press back. You can come all the way back to a child's pose, right? or you might keep the uh, circles a little more subtle. If the hips are clicking and popping, as long as there's no pain, that's totally fine. They're designed to do that. Next time your shoulders are over your wrist, please pause and then reverse the circle. So we're still inhaling to come forward, exhaling to press back, although it might be kind of fun or interesting to reverse the breath. Your body might say, what? Mm -hmm. Try it out, body, see what happens. All right, next time the shoulders are over the wrists, we're going to pause. Then we're gonna take a look back at the legs. We're gonna set the hips over the knees. Now the hands are about half a hand print forward of the shoulders again. We're going to come into our down dog. So let's tuck the toes, big breath in. Exhale, begin to straighten the legs. Get those sit bones that were once your root nice and pointy. They're reaching for where the ceiling and wall meet behind you. Then we roll the heels toward the earth. They don't have to touch. I promise. <laughs> if you're having some low back issues, let's take those feet a little wider than the hip distance. Maybe a lot wider. Maybe we just kind of experiment with walking the feet out, right? How does that feel in your body? We're gonna sway here, bring one heel closer to the earth and then the other. Keep those fingers spread wide, fingertips pressing down. No effort from the neck here. Neck is not involved in your business right now. <laughs> My sister says, the neck is not invited to the party. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pause the sway. We're gonna find stillness now. Equal weight as best we can in hands and feet. Chest is pressing for the thighs. Drawing in energy from feet and hands from the earth. 
releasing what we don't need again through hands and feet. Inhale, soften the knees, turn the gaze forward. Exhale, walk those feet forward toward the hands. Take as much time as you need. Once we reach the front of the mat, we'll find ourselves in forward fold. Head hangs heavy, arms hang heavy. Bring a softness into your knees. Ankles are right under those hip sockets, right? Unless the low back is feeling yucky, walk the feet apart a little bit. Weight of the arm bones and the skull helps bring belly closer to the thighs here. On an inhale, we're going to take a half lift. Lengthen that spine. Gaze this forward, shoulders roll back, heart presses forward. Exhale, fold again, soften the knees, heavy head, heavy arms. Inhale, press off the earth. We're going to rise all the way up. Tuck the tail, palms touch, lift the gaze. I'm looking right into a light here. <laughs> Exhale, hands come to heart center, gaze this forward, release shoulders, release elbows. Let's close the eyes. Right, unless your nervous system says that's not cool. Then leave the eyes open, but maybe see if you can't just soften the gaze. And so we're looking ahead, but maybe not really focusing on anything in particular. Check in on your breath. Check in on your body. Check in on your brain. What are the nature of the thoughts? And they be present and with you in your practice. Give yourself the gift of this hour. And we'll gently blink the eyes open or just bring them back into focus. We'll find our Tadasana pose. Mountain pose. Oh, I love mountain. <laughs> our feet here are our root. We are grounded through the feet. We gently tuck the tail. That kind of naturally helps the low belly come in and up. All right, just like in our seated Sukhasana pose, shoulders over ribs, ribs over hips, palms are forward. Let's take one hand, whichever one happens to come up. <laughs> it's usually your dominant hand. We're gonna bring it behind the base of the skull. We're gonna act as if the chin is a dresser drawer. My Jersey girl accent coming out. We're gonna press the chin back. So the back of the skull presses into the hand. We're resetting the skull on top of the spine. Few breaths here. On your next exhale, slowly, gently release the hand down. It may feel a little odd, right? That the chin may feel a little farther tucked back than you're used to. See if the head doesn't feel a little lighter. All right. So we'll move through some sun salutations here. We'll inhale, reach the arms overhead, palms touch, lift the gaze. Exhale, forward fold, open the arms, lead with the heart. Once the heart begins to face the legs, then arms drop, head drop, soften the knees. You might bring a block or a blanket under the hands here, right, if the hands aren't reaching the earth. We're grounding our forward fold through hands and feet. Inhale, half lift, shoulders roll back, heart presses forward, get that spine nice and long. <laughs> Exhale, fold, soft, and the knees, hands, and feet root down. Inhale, we press off of the earth to rise all the way up. Palms touch, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands through heart center, back to Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, big fold. Soften the knees, rooting down. Inhale, half lift, lift, and lengthen that spine. Exhale, we fold, soft knees. Inhale, press off the earth, we'll rise all the way up, palms touch, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands through heart center, back to Tadasana. All right, we're gonna take those spine movements again. So we'll inhale, we'll get tall. Reach the arms overhead. On an exhale, we're gonna bring right hand to right hip, reach left arm overhead, we're keeping our hips in line just for a few breaths. So we're asking for the stretch just to come from the ribs here. If you'd like more stretch, then we're going to pop that left hip out, really reach to the side. Pay attention to the signals coming from your body, right? There's pain, we come up. If the breath is getting kind of short, we come up. We can maintain that smooth, deep, even breath, or ujjayi breath. 
Let's stay here. All right, on an inhale, let's reach both arms overhead, get tall. Exhale, opposite side, left hand to left hip, right arm reaches overhead, stretching right side body. Keep that hip in line. It wants to pop out. It's ready to go. I feel it. <laughs> Stay there, buddy, just for a minute. Let the ribs have some fun. Big breath in. Exhale. If we want to, then we'll press the right hip out. More stretch. One side, more compression, opposite side. Spine is getting so much love tonight. All right, inhale, let's get tall again. And then we're gonna come into a twist. So on your exhale, bring the left hand forward, right hand back, turn the gaze over the back shoulder. We're pressing front and back wall away, unless that's bringing us pain, then we point palms down. Shoulders and wrists are in line, so I ask the shoulders to release down. Let's bring that left hip back, right hip forward, seeking for the twist to come from the low rib. On an inhale, we'll come forward, reach the arms overhead, long spine, exhale, opposite side, right hand reaches forward, left hand reaches back, gazing over back shoulder. Keep right hip pulling back, left hip pulling forward. Option to point palms down for finding pain in the wrists as we press front and back all the way. Soften the jaw, release the shoulders. Feel the breath move in and out of the body. Inhale, we'll reach the arms overhead. Let the palms touch, lifting the gaze. Exhale, hands through heart center. Back to Tadasana. All right, let's take some standing cat cow. Inhale, we're going to press the heart space forward and a little bit up, tip the chin back, open the arms. All right, imagine someone's behind you and they very gently have their hand on the back of your heart space. Big breath in. Exhale, we're gonna roll the shoulders forward, shoulder blades draw away from each other on the back, wrap the arms around the torso, look down at the arms. Inhale, open, fresh air, fresh breath, fresh energy. Exhale, shoulder blades draw away from each other, opening the back of the heart space, arms wrap around, switch the crossing of the arms. Let's take two more, please. Inhale to open at your own pace. Exhale to round and squeeze out the stale air. Please be sure you've got a little softness, a little bend in the knees. Don't lock your knees out, please. Okay, let's find our Tadasan when we're done. All right, let's come to sit on the mat. And just give the knees, the knees a little bit of a sway again. And we're gonna come onto the back. Please uh, don't have anything under the head. All right. So we'll bring the arms out into a T, palms are down, knees are bent. We're gonna again notice all the places on the back body that are supporting us. This is another practice that's available to you anytime, right? What parts of you are touching earth, right? Or floor or furniture, right? Which becomes an extension of the earth. Where can you feel support from here? You can imagine your roots growing and rooting down. Imagine roots now growing from the palms of the hands, the arms, the shoulders, all the way down the back, into the feet, and root down through the floor, the subfloor, all the way to earth. 
Right. Inhale what you need, exhale what you don't need. We can just sway the knees here. Next time the knees are toward the left, let them fall in that direction. Taking another twist, gaze over right shoulder if that's okay on the neck, otherwise we keep looking up at the sky. Often in the supine twist, there's something in the body that's working that doesn't have to. And so check in on the places you know you hold your stress, right? Those are the easy ones. Those are the easy things to release. Well, really easy, easy ones to identify, let's say. And then be curious, right? What else might be engaged that can release? And how might your body best receive that knowledge, right, that it can let go. Maybe you speak to it in your mind, maybe you send it breath, maybe you reach down and tap it. Maybe you out loud say, hey, right thought I'm talking to you. A few more breaths here, guys. On an inhale, let's bring the feet to the earth, knees up, gaze to the sky. Exhale, let the knees go right, gaze can go left. Feel your connection to the earth, feel your roots. What can soften? Right, where can you allow something to melt away down into the earth through those roots? Inhale, bring the feet to the earth, knees up, gaze to the sky. Exhale, let's bring the knees in, wrap the arms around the shins. Big hug, flex the feet. Notice what your shoulders are doing. If they've kind of crept up, let them release back and down. Maybe a big thank you here to your body, to your breath, whatever feels right. Another big breath in, belly presses into thigh, thigh into belly. Exhale, press the feet up toward the sky. Hands come down by the sides. Keep those feet flexed. Lots of options here. Hands can come behind the thighs for some support. We might point and flex the feet, roll the ankles. Maybe we give the legs a little sway. And so legs up the wall is a signal to the body that it is time to rest. The body systems grow quiet, the mind might grow quiet as well. Feeling those roots from the back body down into the earth, absorbing whatever nourishment you need. Full breath in, please. Exhale, knees come back in. Wrap the arms around one more time. One more big hug. Mm -hmm. Thank you, body. We'll bring the feet to the earth. And we'll get ready for our meditation. So our guided meditation tonight, as always, you can um, come into where you like to be for Shavasana, right? You might lie on the back with knees bent and a bolster under the knees or your feet mat distance apart, knees together, um, or your legs outstretched, let the feet flop, blanket under the low back, maybe blanket under the head. Or if you prefer, you can um, find a different uh, shape for our guided meditation tonight and then move into the Shavasana right afterwards. So for meditation, you might like to be seated with your back against the wall. You might like to be seated in a chair. You might also lie on your side. Okay. Knowing throughout the meditation, right, you can shift and move in order to accommodate your body. You don't want to be distracted by discomfort, right, from your meditation. 
So take some time to settle in, be fussy, right? If you feel a wrinkle and that bugs you, smooth it out. Yeah, get cozy, blanket, eye pillow. So as you settle in, I will begin. You will now practice a visualization meditation intended to help you find rejuvenation and gratitude. If you find you need to shift it all throughout this meditation, be kind to yourself and do so with mindfulness and gentle calm. When you meditate, it's okay to have thoughts. They will come. Just bring your attention back to this meditation as best you can without judgment or frustration. Please close your eyes if you haven't already and begin to let go of any expectations. Let yourself settle into this practice and benefit from this time of calm. Bring your attention to your physical body and notice what you notice. The parts feel warm or cool, soft or tense, constricted or at ease. Take a few moments here and just notice and witness. You might bring breath to any part that feels unwell, inhaling love, light, and peace, and allowing any stress or strain to leave with the exhale. Again, you might feel your roots grow into the earth and allow any stress or strain to leave through the back body. Now bring your awareness to your breath. Notice the rise and fall of the body and the natural, unique rhythm of your breath. It may be subtle, quite pronounced, or somewhere in between. If you find your thoughts wandering, gently come back to the present moment and your breath. Now take a couple of deep yawns. You can fake yawn if you need to. Often that will bring on a real yawn. As you feel ready, bring your attention back to the breath and notice the natural rhythm of your breathing. Begin to, in your mind's eye, picture your body on your mat, in your space. Now imagine your surroundings are slowly disappearing as a new scene begins to appear around you. Different shapes and colors come into view, slowly brightening and sharpening as you look around. You find yourself lying in the soft grass of a lush garden, the sun warming you. Imagine yourself coming to slowly sit up and take a few moments to look around, taking in your new surroundings. You are the creator here. Dig deeply into your imagination and paint this scene letting your creativity flow. Maybe the garden is surrounded by bright green bushes or tall trees. Maybe there are beautifully carved statues or bird baths. What vibrant plants and flowers are thriving there? You feel the soft grass beneath you. You hear the birds and other animals scurry in the trees. Breathe in the fresh air and the fragrance of the flowers, plants, and earth. 
slowly you come to stand and begin to explore your garden. You take a few careful steps forward and you notice a path before you. Its stones are smooth and glistening in the sunlight. You step onto this path and continue to walk forward, curious about where it leads. With each step, you notice you are becoming more and more relaxed, peacefully following this gently winding path through your beautiful garden. Soon you hear trickling water and find yourself before a great stone fountain. Take a few moments to visualize your fountain. Notice the subtle details, the curves, the colors, the shapes the color of the streaming, splashing water. As you stand here, you begin to understand that the water in this fountain is here to refresh you. You move closer and cup your hands and dip them into the cool water. Bringing your hands to your lips, you sip the water, drinking every last drop. And as you drink, you feel the coolness on your lips, mouth, throat, down into your belly. You feel more relaxed and rejuvenated with every swallow. You feel grateful for this water and are deeply appreciative for its gift of rejuvenation. Perhaps you feel as if you need more of what this fountain has to offer. So you cup your hands again and take another drink. Now you begin to realize that the water that flows from this fountain touches everything in the garden, nourishing it, seeping down into the soil and traveling up the roots of every tree, plant and flower providing water for the birds and the small animals that call this garden home. Notice the way the water invigorates these living things, the way it invigorates your body. The soft grasses beneath your feet, the strong trees above you, their leaves glistening in the sun, the other forms of life thriving here. Once more, you cup your hands and gather more water, drinking more slowly now as you continue to feel gratitude for this experience. As you drink, you envision your life perking up and blossoming with renewed energy, just as wilted plants perk up when watered. Appreciation flows effortlessly from you just as the gentle water flows effortlessly from the fountain. Breathing easily, simply enjoy your time in your garden, peaceful and relaxed. There is enough water for everyone here and you are always welcome to come back here to this peaceful sanctuary to fill your cup anytime you need it. You only need to close your eyes and imagine yourself back here. Now it's time to bid the garden goodbye. Once more, you express thanks for this experience and then turn around to slowly follow the stone path back to its beginning. You lay back down in the warm, soft grass, closing your eyes and feeling the sun on your face. Begin to allow the garden to fade from view as your current surroundings begin to rematerialize around you. We will now come into our final Shavasana pose. 
If your body needs some movement, please feel free to do so. Maybe bending into the knees and gently swinging the legs. Maybe your body would like to find a different shape for the next few minutes. As you settle in, we bring the physical body into stillness. And then we ask the mind to also be still. We know the mind is going to bring us thoughts. So when it does, we simply notice it and let it go being frustrated or upset by the thoughts only serves to bring more thoughts. The more we practice quieting the mind, eventually the more space we find between thoughts, the more peace we find between thoughts. And more peace will come both on and off the mat. Please know you have tools here to help quiet the thoughts. You might inhale to the count of four or five or whatever is comfortable for you. Exhale to the same count. You might inhale and repeat your intention. You might exhale and repeat your intention. You are welcome to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you like. I'll call you out though in just a few minutes.
begin to come back to your breath. Begin to picture your body on your mat and in your space. Ask your body how it would like to move. Begin making any movements that feel right to you. There's no wrong answer. Maybe your body is still asking to be still, and that's okay too. Taking your time as you feel ready, please bend into the knees, give them a little sway. And then keeping the eyes closed as best you can. Turning onto either side. And use the bottom arm as the pillow, top arm wraps around the body and a hug. We'll take a moment together at the end of our practice tonight to be with breath, to be with intention. And maybe take a moment for gratitude. These are just some of the tools that we practice on the mat, so they're ready for us off the mat at any time. Breath, intention, gratitude. Taking your time, please, as you feel ready. On an inhale, straighten the top leg. Exhale, you can keep the eyes closed. We'll press up into any comfortable seat. Hands can be brought to heart center or can rest in the mat. Thank you all for trusting me to lead you in your practice tonight. It's an honor. It's my sincere wish that everyone took something that they needed from this practice tonight. Namaste. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Natalie and to Mindful and Multicultural Counseling for making this second Friday gentle practice possible. I'm full of joy and gratitude uh, for that. So thank you, Natalie. <laughs> I see Ben's kitty cat. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions or anything they want to share,